Here before you is the Belgorod, the world's largest submarine, often referred to as Russia's doomsday weapon. Its main armament is the Poseidon Intercontinental Nuclear Torpedo, which is believed to have the capability of creating a radioactive tsunami powerful enough to annihilate an entire coastal city. The submarine's emergence has sparked concern among Western officials, particularly after Russian President Vladimir Putin withdrew from the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty in November 2023. But are the Russian claims about Belgorod true? Is it really a superweapon capable of bringing about doomsday? Or is this simply a strategic ploy by Moscow to intimidate its adversaries? We'll uncover the truth in today's world military video. According to Global Firepower, as of February 2024, the Russian Navy boasts one of the largest submarine fleets globally, with 65 submarines. However, many of these submarines are aging, with some dating back over 30 or even 40 years to the Soviet era. To modernize its submarine fleet, post-Soviet Russia launched the Belgorod-class nuclear submarine in July 1992, following three decades of research and development. Initially based on the nuclear-powered Oskar class, Belgorod was designed to be a guided missile submarine intended to pose a serious threat to U.S. aircraft carrier strike groups. It and its sister submarines were expected to be equipped with 24 P-700 Granite anti-ship missiles. These missiles had a unique feature. They could all be fired at once. The lead missile would transmit target data to the remaining 23, and if the lead missile were intercepted, another would take its place. This gave Belgorod the potential to simultaneously strike multiple enemy fleets. Despite its promise, in 1997, the Russian Ministry of Defense had to suspend the program due to the country's post-Soviet financial struggles. Nevertheless, the hope of completing Belgorod's construction remained, and crew training continued. However, financial issues proved more challenging than anticipated, leaving the submarine three-quarters complete sitting idle for many years at the Severodvinsk port. In 2000, the tragic sinking of the Kursk submarine in the Barents Sea prompted Russia to resume the Belgorod project. By December 31, 2004, the hull was almost complete, lacking only the engine, equipment, and missile compartments. Eight years later, the keel laying ceremony took place signaling a shift in Belgorod's mission. Launched in April 2019 and officially commissioned into the Russian Navy in July 2022, the submarine transformed from an anti-ship vessel into a member of the 29th Submarine Division, a special unit under the Russian Ministry of Defense's Directorate of Deep Sea Research. This mission change is reflected in Belgorod's design. At 184 meters in length, and 18.2 meters in width, with a surface displacement of 14,700 tons and a submerged displacement of 24,000 tons, Belgorod is not only the largest submarine in the Russian Navy, but also the largest operational submarine in the world. The Belgorod submarine is capable of operating at depths of up to 520 meters and remaining submerged for around four months, thanks to its onboard nuclear reactor. It can also reach a top speed of 32 knots, with an effectively unlimited operational range. According to the Russian Ministry of Defense, Belgorod is designed for a variety of missions, including search and rescue operations, research, and serving as a strategic deterrent armed with six 2M39 Poseidon nuclear torpedoes. Poseidon, named after the Greek god of the sea, is a crucial component in understanding Belgorod's true mission. As the world's leading military power and Russia's primary adversary, the United States possesses advanced tracking systems capable of monitoring any missile launch on Earth. These systems even detected China's hypersonic weapons tests in 2021. However, the Poseidon torpedo is far more difficult to detect, especially if it's not actively being searched for, which complicates U.S. defense efforts by offering no advance warning. To enhance its ability to launch surprise attacks, Russia claims to have equipped Poseidon with stealth technology that renders it invisible to the underwater acoustic detection systems deployed by the U.S. across the ocean. While Poseidon does generate some noise during operation, it reportedly only produces sound levels comparable to civilian ships. 
This makes it particularly challenging for the U.S. Navy to distinguish between threats and regular commercial or civilian maritime traffic. According to some Russian sources, Poseidon can automatically slow down to about 3 km per hour when approaching its target, making detection and interception even more difficult in the final stages. In 2018, Russian President Vladimir Putin officially announced the Poseidon project was in development, asserting that it was designed to outmaneuver U.S. defense systems. A key feature of the Poseidon torpedo is its ability to operate autonomously, supported by artificial intelligence, advanced guidance sensors, and a sonar system that helps it avoid obstacles. It is integrated with Russia's GLONASS Global Satellite Navigation System. Moreover, if the claims are accurate, Poseidon can remain undetected for up to seven months, powered by a nuclear reactor with a fuel lifespan of 20 years. The reason Poseidon operates for a shorter period than its fuel lifespan would allow is that it requires maintenance every seven months. According to Russian sources, once its deployment is over, Poseidon can return to port autonomously, where it will be recovered by crewed vessels and a maintenance team will prepare it for its next mission. Powered by nuclear energy, the torpedo can reach speeds of up to 70 knots, approximately 130 kilometers per hour on the surface. The Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists suggests that Poseidon's speed could even reach 100 knots, around 180 kilometers per hour, significantly faster than NATO submarines and torpedoes. It is also capable of operating at a range of 10,000 kilometers and at depths exceeding 1,000 meters. Each Poseidon torpedo carries a nuclear warhead with a yield of 2 megatons, which, for perspective, is 133 times more powerful than the Little Boy bomb, 95 times more powerful than the Fat Man bomb, and twice as powerful as the most potent nuclear weapon in the U.S. arsenal, the B-83. Some reports suggest that in extreme circumstances, the Belgorod submarine could be armed with a 100 megaton nuclear warhead, which would be twice as powerful as the Tsar Bomba, the most destructive nuclear weapon ever detonated in human history in 1961. If true, the Belgorod would pose a terrifying threat to enemy naval bases and coastal cities. In November 2020, Christopher Ford, then U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for International Security and Nonproliferation, voiced concerns that the Poseidon torpedo could devastate U.S. coastal cities with radioactive tsunamis. According to an April 2022 report by the U.S. Congressional Research Service, based on design features and intelligence, Belgorod and its Poseidon torpedoes are considered retaliatory weapons rather than first strike tools. In theory, even if Russia's nuclear arsenal were severely compromised by an enemy's initial strike, the Belgorod could still remain at sea, ready to deploy its arsenal upon command. While Poseidon is considered one of the world's most formidable nuclear deterrents, it can also be equipped with conventional warheads. In addition to its nuclear capabilities, Belgorod is expected to perform a variety of special underwater operations. It is equipped with specialized tools such as the Rosharik, a nuclear-powered mini-submarine attached to Belgorod's hull. This device is highly useful for missions like monitoring undersea internet cables or gathering intelligence. Belgorod also serves as a mothership for unmanned underwater vehicles, UUVs. To support these operations, Belgorod was redesigned in 2017, replacing its missile compartments with larger bays to accommodate underwater drones. This redesign extended Belgorod's original length of 154 meters by an additional 30 meters. Furthermore, Belgorod is believed to control autonomous underwater vehicles, AUVs like the Harpsichord 2 ppm. The nuclear-powered Harpsichord drone is 6.5 meters long, 1 meter in diameter, and has a range of about 27 nautical miles. Some estimates suggest that Harpsichord can operate at depths of up to 6,000 meters, though more conservative reports suggest 2,000 meters as a more likely figure. It is equipped with various sonar and reconnaissance tools to locate enemy infrastructure beneath the Arctic ice. Harpsichord also supports Russia's Black Sea and Pacific fleets. Designed for dual-use purposes, Harpsichord carries out both military and scientific research missions, the latter serving as a cover for secret intelligence-gathering operations. With Harpsichord, Belgorod enhances its reconnaissance abilities while minimizing risk to the submarine and its crew. 
Highlighting its importance in Russia's strategic system, Belgorod and its crew report directly to President Vladimir Putin, who is also commander-in-chief of the Russian armed forces, rather than to naval commanders. This chain of command underscores Belgorod's special operational role. After mysteriously disappearing, Belgorod was detected in the Arctic in September 2022 by satellites from the European Space Agency and the U.S. Geological Survey. European military officials have warned that the Belgorod submarine was heading toward the Kara Sea to test the Poseidon torpedo, raising concerns, although there were no signs that a nuclear warhead would be activated. However, two months later, military sources told CNN that Belgorod had left the Arctic test area and returned to port without conducting the test. U.S. officials believe that the Russians may have encountered technical difficulties and were unable to launch the torpedo. Moreover, with the Arctic waters freezing after the winter season, Belgorod had to submerge beneath the surface. The question remains, where did it go and what has it been doing since the fall of 2022? In January 2023, the Russian Navy received its first Poseidon nuclear torpedoes and completed several performance trials, deploying them at various depths. By late June 2023, Belgorod was reported to have departed from Severodvinsk port in the Russian Arctic. Although this occurred around the same time as the Wagner private military group's rebellion, the two events are believed to be unrelated. At that time, Belgorod appeared to be attempting further sea trials of the Poseidon torpedo without notifying the United States. This is noteworthy because in the past, the Kremlin and the White House would typically inform each other of strategic weapon tests to prevent misunderstandings or misinterpretations of intent that could lead to mistakes. Later, some Russian sources reported that the Poseidon's nuclear reactor had successfully operated according to its design confirming the torpedo's functionality and safety. Sea trials of the Poseidon torpedo were reportedly scheduled for late summer 2023. However, there is little evidence to suggest that this plan was carried out as intended. Furthermore, even if Belgorod and its systems perform as advertised, a critical issue remains, much like with the Su-57 fighter jets and T-14 Armada tanks. There is a lack of numbers. As of now, Russia has only one Belgorod submarine in its fleet, and due to extended development times and international sanctions following the invasion of Ukraine, it is unlikely that they will be able to build another one soon. With only one vessel, Belgorod can be easily tracked via satellite. All it needs to do is surface or leave port, and Russia's adversaries will know exactly what it is doing next. In addition, Moscow has shown reluctance to deploy its newest and most advanced equipment in the Ukraine conflict, as seen with the absence of the T-14 Armada and the Su-57 not flying over contested areas. Similarly, Belgorod has yet to be seen in combat. It is possible that the Russian Ministry of Defense does not want to risk this submarine, which took nearly 30 years to develop, and risk losing the massive resources they have invested in it. Moreover, there are reasons to believe that Belgorod and Poseidon might not be as formidable as Russia claims. First and foremost, the idea that Poseidon can create a tsunami, from both a physical and technical standpoint, is considered highly unlikely. According to Gregory Spriggs, a nuclear weapons physicist at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, a 50 megaton explosion could, emphasis on could, generate a tsunami with the energy equivalent of a 650 kiloton blast hitting the shoreline. Some experts even suggest that a 100 megaton explosion would not be sufficient to create a tsunami if the detonation occurred in waters near the coast. However, this does not mean that Poseidon is not dangerous. According to a former U.S. Navy nuclear and electronics technician, even an offshore explosion would create a wave containing enough radioactive material to render a port or coastal city uninhabitable for about a century. Although this more measured claim offers little comfort to Washington, there are still several reasons to doubt the advertised capabilities of the Poseidon torpedo. While it's massive, measuring 20 meters in length and 2 meters in diameter, this size may still be inadequate to house a large enough nuclear reactor to sustain the long-term operations claimed by its designers. Additionally, 
The Poseidon structure would need to shield its navigation systems and advanced AI from the radiation emitted by its own reactor. Theoretically, this is achievable, but it would impose limitations on the torpedo, making it less effective than the Russian Ministry of Defense suggests. The reactor itself is also worth scrutinizing. For those unfamiliar, nuclear reactors generate heat through the fission process, and this heat is then used to create steam, which drives turbines to generate electricity, powering propulsion in nuclear submarines. However, Western experts argue that Poseidon's size is simply too small to accommodate the complex equipment required for this process. While there are potential workarounds for these issues, they would likely generate a thermal signature that could be tracked even by civilian satellites, let alone military ones. As a result, Poseidon faces a dilemma. It could be made larger to house a traditional nuclear reactor, which would make deployment from submarines impractical, or it could rely on a simplified power process, which would make it easier to detect, compromising its stealth. If Poseidon truly delivers the power and features claimed, then Russian engineers would have had to achieve technological breakthroughs that surpass anything in the West. Just moments ago, World Military mentioned that the U.S. The Congressional Research Service classified Poseidon as a retaliatory nuclear weapon. However, not everyone agrees with this assessment. Some experts argue that despite being fast, Poseidon is still too slow to serve as a reliable retaliatory weapon. Instead, its characteristics align more with those of a first strike weapon. They also note that monitoring devices like Poseidon would be easier to track during peacetime, as these systems would need to be in position before being targeted. This would likely involve positioning it near the shore to create a large enough tsunami and concentrate radioactive pollutants on the target. Moreover, to avoid detection from bubbles caused by cavitation, Poseidon would need to operate at great depths. However, coastal waters are typically shallow, which makes many experts believe the torpedo isn't intended to target ports or coastal cities directly. This theory seems to be supported by the practical deployment of the Belgorod submarine and Poseidon by the Russian Navy. By the end of 2023, there had been no reports of successful sea trials for Poseidon, nor was there concrete evidence that Belgorod was patrolling offshore. Furthermore, Russia's so-called doomsday submarine has encountered issues when performing less critical missions, such as serving as a mothership for unmanned submarines and drones. In July 2019, for example, the Losharik submarine suffered a battery failure during testing off the Russian Arctic coast, resulting in a tragic accident that killed 14 crew members. This incident underscores the fact that if Russia wants to turn Belgorod into a genuine doomsday weapon, it must take tangible steps beyond mere media promotion. In conclusion, the Belgorod submarine and its capabilities resemble many other advanced Russian weapons programs, which are surrounded by bold claims but lack substantial evidence. What do you, the viewers, think of the Belgorod submarine and its unique weapon? What is Poseidon's true purpose? Can it operate as Russia claims, or is it simply a paper tiger designed by Moscow to intimidate the West? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.